Hey, how's it going? Paul Harris here. So this is the second video of my five part series talking about Excel. Okay, so these videos are specifically for people who are thinking about getting into accounting and finance don't have much Excel knowledge. Now, obviously, if you're going into a finance role, there's a lot of data to be used. You generally use Excel an awful lot. So this video is going to be on shortcuts. The last video I made was on just basic Excel, moving around, formatting. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. This one's on shortcuts, so the ability to move around an Excel document with ease and efficiency it means that you can get your work done faster. The next three videos will be on formulas, pivot tables, and other sort of things like that. So that's what we're going to do in this video. should be helpful. It allows me to get work done a lot quicker than other people. So. If that's your kind of thing, let's get into it. So here we go, we're in Excel. If you saw my last video, you'll be familiar with this table. It basically shows car owners, the brands, and then different uh, things to do with those cars, like the liters, how many units were sold, etc., etc. Uh, so we formatted this table in the last video. Now, when you go into a finance role, you'll often find that there's a huge amount of data, a lot more than what we have in this table. All we have in this table is 51 lines. Usually you have well, you can have up to like 200,000 lines within one Excel sheet. So some of the shortcuts I'll show you are probably more relevant to when there's larger sets of data. Also, the shortcuts I'm going to show you obviously are on the keyboard. So it, I had two options. Either was to record the keyboard, but then I thought you might not be able to see my fingers are. So every time I use a shortcut, I'll talk about the shortcut and I'll put like control up and all that kind of stuff on the screen so you know what I'm actually doing. So firstly, it's important to be able to move around the document. Here I have certain tabs and I have data. If I want to move around the sheet, I generally press control and then the arrow keys. And this will move the cell to each corner of the table that I'm looking at. So it allows me to move up and down a sheet with ease. So I can go to the totals and I scroll up again by pressing control up or control down and control side to side. And that's what I use to get me around the sheet. If I want to highlight the entire table, you press control A. Okay, that's important because then if you want to copy that into a separate sheet, so you press control C to copy, then you can move to a separate tab by pressing control and then either page down or page up. And that'll move either to the left tab or to the right tab. So control and then page down moves me to this sheet. And then I can press control V and copy the table from the previous sheet. So there are loads of different shortcuts there that help you move around. If you want to undo something, you press control Z. So some of these are general things that you know from using a computer anyway, specifically a PC, I should say. Um, but obviously, they're obviously relevant within using Excel. If I want to copy that data, but I want it to be unformatted and just copy values, I will press Control alt v This will bring up this Paste Special box. Now this is very useful. You can then start doing things like just copying the values within that table. Why is that important? Well, often in Excel, you'll get tables with loads of different formulas on them, but you don't want to copy those formulas across within Excel. You might just want to copy the values to a separate sheet. So you go to Paste Special, click on Values, and you can use the Tab bar to move through the Paste Special box, and you can press OK. And that will allow you to just copy the values from the table that you saw before. So that's a load of stuff. That allows you to move around the document, that allows you to move between tabs, up and down sheets, and now I've showed you how to copy and paste data. That paste special box is a very useful tool for a lot of reasons. If you press Control alt v again, you can copy the values again, but this time transpose the data, which means that the rows and columns revert on each other. So you press this transpose box, then press OK, all of a sudden you can see that what was the columns are now the rows and what were the rows are now the columns. So that's another thing you can do using Control alt v to bring up the Paste Special box. So those are shortcuts you're going to use all the time. Another shortcut you're going to use is if you want to add to a table a row or a column. Now the best way to do this is to highlight the entire column using Control space 
Then you can press Shift Control and the plus key and increase a column. You can do the same thing with a row by pressing Shift Space, so not Control Space, Shift Space to, to assign the entire row. Then you can press Shift Control Plus to increase the row. So there we are, we've created a new row of no, with no data in and you have created a new column with no data in. The same thing applies if you want to delete the rows and columns. So you can press Control Space to highlight the column, then press Control Minus. Okay, so not Control Shift Minus, just Control Minus. If you want to delete the row, you press Shift Space again, and this time you press Control Minus and it deletes the row. If you want to select a load of data from a column and repeat that data into a separate row, you can highlight the data by pressing Control Space, copy it by pressing Control C, and then you can press Shift Control Plus and it will copy the column into the next one along. So now you have two columns here, both of which say liters. So one thing I'm going to assign to this table is a freeze panel. So I showed you freeze panel in the last video. It basically means you select the cell in which you want to freeze the columns and rows. So I go to cell D3 and I press Alt W F F and that will freeze the panels. What Alt basically does is accesses the panel. So every time you press Alt, if you press Alt then H, it'll access all the different options within the panel of the home section. If you press Alt W, it'll access everything in the panel on the view section. So when I pressed Alt W F F, it effectively went, I want to access the view bar of the panel, and then I want to access the bit which says free cells, and then I chose the option of F to actually freeze on that cell. So Alt W F F. Now, if I want to access the home panel, you can press Alt H and then it accesses all the keys within the home section of the uh, panel bar. So you can press Alt H P and that would basically change it to percentage because the P is the assigned to the percentage bar within the home section of the panel. Um, using that tool that I uh, described earlier, which is Control Alt V, is you can Instead of clicking on the format paster, which I discussed in the last video, which allows you to basically copy over a format from one cell into all the other cells, you can copy by pressing Control C on the format, so in this case 1.2 litre, go over the 100% because I don't want it to say 100%. So I've copied the 1.2, gone over the cell which says 100%, and then Control Alt V will bring up the paste special bar again. Once I have that up, I can press on this format section. So there you have it that I've actually been able to format the liters cell on D3 using one of the other cells from that column without having to go to the paste special section. Since I freezed cells at D3 I can now move down this table by pressing control down and you can see that I have these grand totals here. Now for some reason these aren't bold, so what I can do is highlight a selection of these rows by basically holding down Control shift and then I can use the right arrow key and as I click I can highlight the section that I want to bold and then I can press Control b and that will bold it. Now you can see there's already formulas here, equal sum and then it highlights the entire column. Let's say there aren't formulas there, so I can then delete these by pressing the delete button. Now, if I want to just add up that entire column, there's two ways you can do that. You can do equal sum, you can type literally in equal sum bracket and then highlight the entire row using control shift up key. But what I like to do is just press alt equals and it will literally take, it will create the sum value formula and then automatically highlight the cell adjacent to the cell that you've just pressed that uh, shortcut on. So that will highlight the entire column. So what I can do then is press Control C to copy that cell that I have the formulas on, press Shift, hold down Shift, and then when I press the arrow keys, I can go across all the cells that I want to highlight. So the difference between Control Shift and Shift is that Control Shift will automatically go across all the cells that have numbers in them. If I don't have numbers in them, you just hold down Shift and you can move across manually cell by cell. So I've copied across all those cells, as you can see, highlighted, and now I press Control V and it copies across the formulas from the cell that I originated from. 
So there we are. Now, if I go up again to the top of the table, there are instances where you have to edit cells, okay? But maybe you just want to edit what's at the end of that cell text. To do that, you press F2. And you can see here, I've got to the, then I've started editing from afterwards the BMW group. So then you can start editing like this. See, I can add text. That allows you to, doesn't mean, that allows you to not have to double click on each cell. So another thing that you'll find yourself doing a lot is um, wanting to reduce rows or hide rows. Now, there's two ways you can hide a row. You can group a set of rows or columns, I should say. You can group them and then hide the grouping, or you can just hide the entire row. So what you can do is highlight each row by pressing shift space. Then you hold down shift and say I wanted to just hide the whole Fiat Chrysler automobile section. I can scroll down go by pressing shift down. Then you can press control nine. And what that does is a shortcut to hide whatever you're highlighting, rows or columns. Now, you don't want to do that. So effectively, there's no shortcut to undo that other than, well, un unless you press control Z, which uh, literally undoes the, tr uh, the action. But say you didn't have the option of just going back one key, you can just highlight the rows either side of the hidden cells, and you literally have to right click and go unhide. Now that's a relatively slow way of doing it. Um, if you want to do the same thing where you just hide the columns, you basically have to uh, highlight the entire column by pressing control space, and then you press control zero, and that will highlight, um, and that will actually hide column that you've just selected. So again, if you want to undo that, I'll press control Z, but otherwise you have to literally right click on the columns either side and unhide those um, and unhide those columns. The faster way of doing it, and what I prefer to do, is add groupings. So how you add a grouping is you press shift space to highlight the rows that you want to hide using a group. Then you go down and select the section using shift down. Then you press control alt and then the right key. And that will add a grouping. The advantage of using grouping is it's then quicker to go in and out of the grouping by pressing, say, Alt A, then H to hide that grouping. And then if you want to unhide it, you can press Alt A, J. And then that will undo that grouping. So you see how that's faster because I can go in and out of that grouping now with a lot more ease. Now you can make lots of different groupings. And also the groupings are very quick to sort of do, isn't it? You basically shift space, highlight the section you want to group, and then you press control alt right, and you can add another grouping. If you want to um, hide the entire groupings, so see how I have two groupings here, I can h cover that area by pressing control shift up. And now I can press alt a uh, h on all of it, and it'll hide both of them. The same if I want to unhide by pressing Alt A J, and they all unhide. And you can undo that grouping by pressing Shift Alt uh, and then the left key. And you can see they're both deleted. So that's another way that you can sort of manage the data flow is by grouping a load of data. Another thing you can do if you want to add a filter to all these um, columns is instead of clicking on the filter button, you press Control Shift and then L, and that will add a filter. Then, instead of having to click on this little button here that goes this down arrow, what you can do is press Alt down on the uh, cell that you want to filter, and then click through each of the options using the Tab key. So then you go down, and you can go to this section. Now, instead of having to click on all these little icons with a tick, you can press the Space key. And then when you go down this section here, you can press the space on all the things that you want to just um, keep within the table. Then when you want to OK that, you press Tab and then OK, and you can see a set of data there. If you want to get rid of that filter and the whole filtering on that table, you press the same thing again, which is Control shift l and it gets rid of all the filters. If, for instance, I add another column here uh, using percentages, I want to calculate the percentage difference between two cells. So I'll do equals, you can't do a shortcut for this. 
so drag that down doesn't have a shortcut but say I wanted to um, add a percentage I would go alt H P that adds a percentage but say in this instance you have a difficult formula now for this I can see right here that says K3 divided by J3 if I wanted to see where those cells were on the page you press control and then the square bracket and you can see that highlights the two cells that were in that formula then if you want to move between those cells you press the tab bar see that doesn't seem that useful there but say my formula was for some reason this plus then all of a sudden instead of having to search down for the cell f25 by pressing control and then open square bracket I can then press the tab and it sends me to that cell. See that? So I can see where that cell is that I'm highlighting between those formulas. Another quick thing that I'll show you is, say you have a set of data here that looks like this. So you can see that all these, everything below BMW should be BMW, but there's blanks and the same with Fiat, the same with Ford, the same with General Motors. Now, instead of having to go down and copy each of the BMWs like that and all the different owners like this, there is a quick way of doing this. Now, this is very useful when you have a huge set of data and some reason it's assigned that each of the brands assigned the top cell of the left. What you can do is equals the cell above, copy using control C, that formula, highlight all the other blank cells like this by pressing shift down, then you press F5. That brings up this box saying go to. You press special, blanks, OK, and then it highlights all the blank areas. Then when you press control V, it's copying the formula which is equals up. All of a sudden you can see that that's filled in the data without you having to go down each separate cell. Then you can highlight all the rows and to avoid any complications you press Ctrl C to copy and then press Ctrl V and then paste values by going on this paste special box and clicking values. And all of a sudden you have the set of data there as you would like to see it. So there we are, that's basically it. There's a load of shortcuts there that should help you get on your way to being able to use Excel in a lot more efficient way. So the next couple of videos what I'm gonna do is simple formulas, harder formulas, and then the last video I'll do is on pivot tables and uh, graphs and things like that. Hopefully that's been useful. If you did like it, check out the next video that I'm gonna make, and I will see you next time. Thank you.